Ah, Bugs Bunny Lost in Time. Such a great game. A game based off many of Bugs Bunny's old cartoons. Utter bliss. Ah, poor naive Teal. Such were the days when he used to think that the title theme was saying Bugs Bunny Lost in Time in musical form. Bugs Bunny Lost in Time. 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 Okay, that's enough of that. The game's story is based off a cartoon called Nightmare Hair, where Bugs Bunny ends up going back in time after being hit on the head by an apple. Except he's not really going back in time. He ends up meeting a sorcerer called Merlin, who can help him get home, but he ends up becoming a horse. Yeah. Watch the cartoon, which is now it's amazing. So in this game, Bugs Bunny's trying to get to Pismo Beach. Oh, I love that reference! Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it! And he ends up making the wrong turn at Albuquerque. <laughs> it gets better every second. Hey, wait a minute. This doesn't look like Pismo Beach. I probably should have turned right at Albuquerque. On his travels, he finds a time machine. He decides to use it, and he ends up in a place called Nowhere. Yeah. Nowhere. In quotation marks. Nowhere. In... N nowhere. He meets Merlin, who says something along the lines of, You have been lost in time. You will need to find these clock symbols to get home. So Bugs needs to collect these clock symbols, and eventually, after he collects enough, it'll get him back home. Isn't that lovely? Doesn't really make sense, because about 50 clocks will take you to the distant future, but 120 will take you to the present. Alright, I won't argue that. So let's see what the tutorial's like in... Nowhere. Well, let's listen to what the music sounds like. Okay then, that's slightly terrifying. <laughs> oh look, we have dead trees here, and fog, and a boxing ring. Okay, let's ignore that for a while. Now maybe it's just me, but the music scared the hell out of me as a kid. There's something wonderfully chilling about it. So what the hell is a boxing ring here? So you've got to do different things, you've got to sneak up behind someone and kick them in the arse, because that's the way forward as a rabbit, this is what you do, you kick people in the arse, while they're sleeping. Don't argue it. Here you'll learn different tricks of the trays, look, you can climb up ropes, or in this case chains, you can jump on people's heads, beating them to a pulp, oh it's so very non-violent. You can, you can float down... TNT? Yeah, not arguing it. Nope, nope. You can lift heavy, solid metal cubes. Have you been to the gym recently, Bugs? Oh, you have, haven't you? You can roll. Don't forget the rolling ability. You might find a secret location. Maybe they will lead you to a clock symbol. And well, hey, once you get the ten golden carrots, you can exchange it for a clock, and you can now travel to different parts of time. The writing. Flawless. There are five different errors within the game. The first is the Stone Age era, and the leader is Elmer Fudd. Not sure why, since he's only in one cartoon as a Stone Age type man person thing, but eh, again, I won't argue it. The second era is the Pirate Years, which has Yosemite Sam as the leader. You know, because he's got his persona from Mutiny on the Bunny, and Captain Hairblower. And look, the boss is a replica of that, how cool! The third era is the 1930s, and the leader are Rocky and Muggsy, because everyone loves those guys. Get that rabbit, Muggsy! Then there's the medieval period, where you can fight Witch Hazel as the leader. Also, Merlin is here in almost every level where he gives you different abilities, such as the super jump. Ollie, ollie, action free. The music ability. Hovering ability. Hocus pocus. And open sesame. Open sesame. Genius. And finally, there's the Dimension X. And of course, the leader would be Marvin the Martian because he has his Illudium Q36 explosive space modulator. So, how does the gameplay feel? Fresh. Fun. Fancy. Lovely, wonderful. Really though, it feels so tight. Everything works brilliantly. So how is the music in this game? Is, is it okay? Is it terrible? Is it great? Is it good? Is it is it absolutely damn stunning? 
As you may have already heard, the music's been playing in this video for a while. Mm, 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 <laughs> so good. Yeah, really, really. The game has quite a big emphasis on backtracking. Once you get the different magical abilities, you'll actually be able to unlock different sections from earlier levels because they required said magic abilities. Ah ha ha! Love it when they include Metroidvania type stuff. The fact that you get so many clocks within one level allows you to open up sometimes two levels at once, and it makes the game feel a lot funner because you just realise that you're unlocking so many things and there's so many different worlds to explore and... They're all homages! That sounded a bit like Mickey Mouse. Aha! This isn't my game! Aha! I'm gonna leave! Aha! For example, there's a common pirate gangster and security card who are enemies based off Black Jack Shalak, who appeared in Bonanza Bunny. Another example is in the 1930s where there's a level called La Carida and it's a homage to Bully for Bugs. Everyone knows that cartoon. It's a classic. Daffy Duck appears in the medieval period as his Robin Duck persona from Robin Hood Daffy. Ho! Ha ha! God! Turn! Perry! Dark! Spin! Ha! Frost! You know, with his buck and a quarter quarter staff. All the Dimension X levels are inspired by Hairway to the Stars. Although there are many Marvin the Martian cartoons, I think that one was the one that gives the biggest impact and therefore the levels were based off it. Rabbit or Duck Season is a homage to Rabbit Fire. Everyone knows that cartoon. Duck Season. Rabbit Season. Rabbit Season. Duck Season. Fire! <laughs> so bad. The Sneezing Dragons are based off Night to Night Bugs. You know, the award winning Night to Night Bugs. You know it. It's pretty famous. It's a great cartoon. You idiot dragon! The list is endless as to how many references there actually are in this game, but trust me, if you've seen the cartoons and you play this game, you'll notice the references, and that's what makes it so much better. The game includes a variety of minigames to get different collectibles, as you'll see in this montage. Where'd the bone go? Where'd the bone go? Why is the bone gone? No! No, no, no! Okay. Where does the bone? Throw the bone. Throw the bone. Hit the buttons. <laughs> Stupid dog! Winning. Sucks to be you. Hey. You dick! Hey. Get away from me! Everybody super rabbit racing, try to keep your feet right off the ground. Literally because we're in hoverbikes. The bosses are all rather unique and they're based off the cartoons themselves. So for example, Elmer Fudd, you dive into a rabbit hole, Elmer Fudd looks for you, you come out of another rabbit hole, kick him in the arse. Rabbits need to kick people in the arse. It's part of life. Overall, it's a spectacular game and there's no reason why you shouldn't play it if you're a huge Looney Tunes fan. It's one of the best games to play if you're a Looney Tunes fan. There are much worse things you could play. Don't disgrace this video with your presence. Away with you! That's better. What did it say about being in my video?! The game does have its difficult sections, such as trying to get past an annoying trash can. Again, another great reference. My God! Justified rage. Hey. But that just adds to the fun of the game. Making the game more difficult as you go along is good. Why wouldn't you want it to get harder as you go along? If it was the same easy difficulty, then you'd get bored. Right? Overall, I rate this 9 out of 10. It's a fantastic game, but the story could be better. There are just a few flaws that bug me a bit. I think it's also a shame that there isn't a final boss. Each world just has a boss and a set of mini-bosses and that's it. There isn't a final boss for the game, but it's not that bad. The bosses are really fun, they keep you entertained for the entire game. But overall, it's a fantastic game and it needs to be played by more people. So go out there, find a copy, and play it to your heart's content. You Looney Tunes fan, you! I think the biggest memory I have of this game is Bugs Bunny doing one thing. One phrase that will stay with me forever. Ollie, ollie, action free!
So I hope you enjoyed my first review. I was a bit nervous and worried that people wouldn't like it, but I hope you do. So uh, I think it turned out quite well. I want to give a shout out to two people. First is Ceci Gaming. She does reviews and she is amazing at them. You should definitely check her out right now. And another person equally as amazing, Cat Icarus. His, his reviews. My god, they're so funny. He's like the British John Tron, but he's better than John Tron. I feel. I feel that he is. He's really funny and it, it is just amazing watching everything he does. I'd, I'd love one day to do a review or a let's play with him, but yeah, only time will tell. So yeah, definitely subscribe to those two. Also, I have many let's plays on my channel if you're new here. Seriously, I have over 200. It blows my mind. It really does. Bye! Oh, silly me. That was my sweeping broom. <laughs>